What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I've got my battery relocation video that I'm going to be doing for you guys. Um, and I do things a little bit differently. If you are not someone that has you know seen many videos before, uh, I don't really do things in the normal fashion. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be relocating the battery, which used to sit here. I've got it just right there. Um, I'm going to be relocating where the battery sits from the front of the car to the rear of the car. Um, I'm going to be keeping it completely hidden so when you open the trunk, you don't, one, all the carpet and stuff will be in here, but you don't see basically any battery back here the same way that you don't see any fuel set, set up or surge tanks or anything like that. Um, I, just, I just like having stuff hidden to where you don't immediately see it because it just looks cleaner that way. You don't have you know, wires and cables and vacuum hoses everywhere. It just, it looks neater. So that's why I like hidden. So what I do have is the Red Top Optima. Now I don't have, you know, a big sound system or, you know, many things to, to, to power while the car is off. Um, lights and stuff like that is easy for it. And I've got to give a pretty big shout out to my buddy Ben over at A2R Performance because, uh, I, I called around and asked a couple of people and I didn't ask him for a special price or, you know, you do this, I'll do this type of thing. It was simply, hey, I need a battery. He showed up and it was like 290 bucks for that one. So super, super good price. That's Australian. Um, super, super good price. Super happy with, with the service. Definitely recommend them. If you need a battery, go see Ben. Um, other thing I got was 200 amp circuit breaker i don't know if it's focusing on that i got new terminals the reason i got these um gold terminal ones was you've got basically two provisions for your power so you can do two big zero gauge wires plus two small accessories so i'm gonna do both my fuel pumps off of these guys because i'm doing power directly from the battery and then i'll have one open port plus the one that's going to the front of the engine bay and then I don't need anything off the ground, but it's got, uh, it's got space to allow me to put some eye connectors on there, but I won't need that. Some eyelets, that's just a, a two-way connector distribution block, remote jumper um, terminal. So basically what this thing allows you to do is to mount your terminal in the engine bay and then all your accessories will basically just go to that. So you don't have to extend all the wiring out. I can just go bloop. And then, you know, that's, that's gonna power everything in the engine bay for me. And then I've just got an assortment of other stuff. So I've got some zip ties of different lengths. I got some heat shrink, a couple of connectors. And then I've got some, basically like the mil spec wiring sleeve, which I just like this stuff because it makes it look so clean. Um, and then of course, the main attraction here, I've got my ground wire, which is full copper core, um, zero gauge. And then I've got my full copper core power wire. So I got about uh, six, six meters. I think that's six meters, yeah. About 16 feet, 15 feet, something like that. And then a meter and a half of this one just because it's going to go straight off the battery to the to the car so that's basically everything you're going to need i mean tools wise you know crimpers and cutters i've got most of what i need in in the boxes here but you'll see it kind of as i use it i'll explain what i'm using and how i'm using it so you will be able to follow along um, I will go ahead and say now that this isn't necessarily meant as a how-to, more of a, I'm going to do a battery install very cleanly and neatly and then do it in a way that you can follow along. Last thing you're going to need for the battery relocation is a battery box plus a tie down. I don't have the tie down right this second. Um, I'm, I'm actually thinking about making it myself, but I don't have that. But what I do have, and we'll just... We'll get into these cardboard templates here in a minute. But what I do have 
is this as a battery box. You might be going, what in the world? That is way too thin to be a battery box. But, you get some transformer music happening here. Skadoosh. She transforms into a big Nismo crate. So as you can see, I've already pre-drilled a couple of holes in there. And that's just gonna tie down to my, my plate. But I have already checked to make sure our battery fits in there perfectly. So we've got actually quite a bit of room on either side, two spare, which is good because that'll, that'll mean making the tie down, um, making the tie down will be easier for me and, and getting it all secure. How am I gonna mount this thing to the car? Well, that's where those battery uh, cardboard templates came in, into play. Why would I need to use a cardboard template for a battery relocation? Well, pretty easy to answer that. One is, like I said, I like things hidden, and two, I did not wanna cut into my car. So as you can see, I would basically need to cut through the the floor here or drill through the floor and mount my plate and then mount the battery back here i'm not yeah I, I don't like doing that so what i've done is i basically took some cardboard laid it down drew out a template and then i basically took that template to a fabricator and got him to cut out the template so as you can see all this stuff just kind of sits in there all nice and neat. That's basically my bracket for my battery relocation. And I'll show you the metal piece now. So like I said, I just drew these up, went out and bought a piece of sheet, um, sheet metal. I think this is like eighth inch thick or something like that, but it's pretty sturdy. Went out, bought some of that, traced my templates over and then took it to um, to get to a friend of mine over at RB Powerhouse Fabrication, Mick. He went and cut them all out, put it to uh, bend them how I needed it to be bent. And that's where we're at. So that's the plate and then that's the bracket, uh, how everything sits. I got the bolts right there, but that's how all that sits. I just bolt that into the existing holes. One, two, three. And then I bolt the crate to the uh, bracket itself. And then that's basically the battery holder slash tie down part done. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get set up, get this all moving along, we'll get the cameras in place uh, and I'll get to work. All right, so I basically needed to uh, paint those brackets because um, obviously raw metal will rust over time. So I just went ahead and hit it with some uh, rust protection black on all my brackets, sanded them up, kind of just took the edges off of them. So I'm gonna wait for those to dry and um, we'll go ahead and get into the actual install for this waiting from paint to dry, literally. You can see it's gotten a little dark on me. But um, I went ahead and put the positive and negative terminals on. I haven't like routed them completely, but I went ahead, mounted up the uh, circuit breaker. So I've got positive in, and that goes to the battery. And then negative, which that'll also go to the battery. And then that part will go to the chassis on the car. So I'll uh, basically um, wire wheel a little piece away and then put a another uh, eye terminal on there and then that'll go to the car and then basically the rest of this comes into the box through the hole and then it goes to the other side of the circuit breaker it's definitely not a five minute job. Put our newly painted brackets in so that we can bolt everything down. 
So this plate right here is basically just a base plate that it all sits on. Um, it's all pre-cut, ready to go, because I had the forethought to kind of do all that. So all I really have to do is set it down. So we've got a bolt here for the, the stock jack, and then that's another one for this for the jack. And then there's some electronic module back here that has a bolt hole that I'm using. So all I'm gonna do is slide the plate in like that. All right, so I've, it's a uh, it's a new day, as you can see. I'm all my, my facial hair just fell out. Anyway, so I've been sitting here. Uh, or last night I was sitting here for like an hour trying to figure out how I'm gonna mount this box because I want all the wiring hidden, and I don't really know how to do that. Like I'm not a fabricator or anything like that. I'm just doing this how I think it should be done in my head, and then trying to replicate what I can see. So. I basically had to figure out, like I mounted it in the trunk a few times. I'm sure you just saw that in a little time lapse there. Um, and I realized, wait a minute, I actually, hold on. Let me, let me uh, get some light in there for you. I realized, wait a minute, I wanna put my carpet in there and I need to put the spare tire cover in there or else none of that's gonna be a true reflection of what the trunk's gonna look like. So I had to take it, everything back out. And then I realized, crap, how am I gonna mount the, the ground wire to this? So I've just basically wire wheeled back some paint here. And then I've got my washers and a couple of bolts that I'm gonna use to, uh, to do that with. But what I'll do real quick is just quickly show you how do you stop rust from forming? Dielectric grease makes better conductivity and stops rust from forming as well. So I'll stick some of that on there as well. So back to the box. And I know it's probably like, geez, dude, like how long is it gonna take you to do a battery relocation? But it's like, it's a lot harder to do this when you actually give a shit and you want everything to be neat and clean looking. Like if I wanted to just throw it in a battery box and you know, have wires and everything everywhere, then be a little bit different. It probably would go a lot faster. Um, and that's not a jab at anybody or anything or anything like that. But um, yeah, it's just, it takes a lot more time when you have to sit here and rethink and, you know, make custom pieces to do stuff. So anyway, back to this. So I have made my, I have made my, uh, ground wire up so I've got the gold plated terminal and then I just made the eyelet there and I used the mill spec like I said I would before and then I just marked my midpoint where it's gonna be sticking through the crate right there and the reason that I did that is so that basically when I'm installing the box I can pull this all the way through Now, I can mount this to the car without the box being mounted. And then when I go to mount the box, I just slide this back in to the tape. That'll still be connected. And then I can still mount this wherever I want it. So now I've got the ground with the dielectric grease on there. And we've got our box ready to go. So now all I need to do is slide this over top. This is another reason why this is taking so long. 
I put the box in before I put the trim back in. So now I've got to pull this out one more time, put the trim in, and then put this back. But there you go. So battery is in the box. Now I just need to run this to the front of the car, which thankfully now we're at the easy part. So I'm just gonna follow all the factory wiring. It's gonna come up over here, come down. There's some tape there. I'm just gonna put it all in there and then continue to follow it back. Now this is my fuel pump wiring that went to the front of the car, the black one. Um, so I'm gonna rip that out and feed that back to the car as well. Uh, that's my copper core power wires directly from the battery. And then I've already cut the in-link terminal off the, uh, the old battery, which is that. And that goes to the alternator and the starter. And then this is the two terminals on the battery that basically go to the little red top thing. I think I've tossed it somewhere. That, so they used to go into this, which went onto the battery. I don't need that anymore because there's no battery. So I'm gonna put these two together and then I've, that jumper terminal that I showed you in the beginning of the video, I made a bracket for have the power from the battery, power to the starter and the alternator. And then all my accessories are powering off this as well. So I'm just basically using this jumper terminal um, I guess <laughs> as a jumper, like it's, I'm, I'm just using it to link everything together, um, to send, send power. Technically, once this is on, should be able to flip the circuit breaker on and we should have power for the first time in a long time. So as you can see, the jumper is mounted on the bracket here and then I just basically feed all my eye terminals over the top and secure them with the two bolts and spring nut. All right and we're back. All right so as you can see um, what I've uh, what I've done here is I've fed a power power line from the battery this is the factory line that feeds the harness. So you can see you've got your alternator and your starter down there. And that same wire comes up and feeds off here. So you get direct power from the battery, direct power to the alternator and the starter. And then your accessory for the fuse box and you know all the other things in the engine bay, which is up here, um, feeds off that as well. So really the only thing to do now is to turn it on and to test it. Hopefully my house doesn't catch fire. The alarm light is on, the interior dome lights are on. We have LEDs and I would call that successful. So I do gotta make one, oh, two small changes. One, I've got the wrong size negative terminal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip my circuit breaker there. So now the battery isn't powering anything. Um, so that's not a big deal at all because this, this wing nut comes off and then all I have to change is literally just this, uh, this terminal here. So I just need to get a smaller sized negative terminal because you can see this one's loose even though I've got it cranked all the way down. All right, so that is the battery relocation done as cleanly as possible um, without having a massive battery box or you know unsightly wires everywhere. Um, the engine bay, obviously, I couldn't show you guys the tucked version of that because I don't have all the panels on the car because I don't like to do things a couple of times. <laughs> So I'm trying to wait until I've got enough parts um, and basically how I want it all to fit so I can just put it back together once. Um, I will clean up the wiring a little bit, but it is for the most part how I want it to be. Um, I just need to tuck it, that's it. So basically just cable tie it up. If you have not already, make sure you hit subscribe because I'm always doing more videos. Next thing that we're gonna do on the car is actually pull the subframe out because I found this. I just 
have parts everywhere. All right. I don't know if you guys can see that goopy little puddle right there. But that, my friends, is from the subframe. So the bushes, when they go bad, they leak. And as you can see by that puddle, they done. So subframe will come out, diff bushings done, subframe bushings, um, probably powder coat subframe, all that stuff. That will happen. I still have a few things out at the zinc coaters as well. So plenty, plenty more content coming. Obviously this thing is still being built. Um, I'm now that the car is fairly finished in terms of resto parts and things like that. Once I rip the subframe out and do the rear, that'll probably be the last thing I do other than minor upgrades here and there uh, to get the car ready. So I'll work on trying to get this engine in the car uh, and hopefully, hopefully my first goal is to have the car ready for Kudamundra next year. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to do it. I'm definitely going to start putting out a bunch more merch. So if you, got, you guys like the Nismo stuff, make sure you grab that. Links are in the description below. Big, big shout out to Goodzilla, man. Um, I watched your video probably about 15 times, uh, just making sure that I covered off everything and seeing how you did things in the engine bay and, and you know, like parts and stuff that I needed to use. So huge thank you to you. If you guys don't know who Godzilla is, then you're probably living under a rock. Hit subscribe, tick the bell, and I'll see you guys